In diagnosis of plant problems, we're going to delve a little more deeply into biotic plant diseases. So plant disease is any condition that interferes with the normal plant uh, development and injures the plant. This is Camellia flower blight, which is a fungal disease. I imagine you've seen this out there. Now remember in diagnosis, we've got a sign. A sign is a physical presence of a disease organism. In this case, it's the white moldy growth from powdery mildew on watermelon. Symptom is the abnormal appearance from the, on the plant resulting from this disease. Here we have rose mosaic virus. So pathogen is from the Greek. Pathos means suffering. Gene means to give birth to. These are disease-causing organisms that injure plants. They obtain their nutrients from the host. They're infectious. They're transmitted to others, other plants. Viruses, bacteria, fungi, nematodes, and other parasites are included in this. So we have fungi, and then we have oomycetes, as we remember. Uh, it is actually not a fungus. It is closely associated with fungal diseases. Bacteria, viruses, nematodes, phytoplasma, and of course this accounts for about 25% of plant problems and about 85% of those are fungi. So when you're out there and you're looking for your samples, chances are if it's biotic, it may be a fun fungus. So think about that. So signs are physical part of a pathogen. Here we have the fungal spores on a rust on tree mallow. This is a bacterial disease, gamosis on cherry. This is a sign. Symptoms is the interaction between the pathogen and the plant, and you would have leaf spots, puckering, lesions on fruit. This is apple scab. You, on the left, you've got it on the leaf, and then on the right, you've got it on the fruit. So bacterial infection will appear as a water-soaked appearance. Viruses have any number of uh, symptoms, but in this case, we have virus modeling on lily. So this is a symptom of root knot nematode on corn. On the right-hand side, we've got healthy roots. On the left, we've got root knot nematode. So you can imagine that's going to hinder the growth of the plant. So you want to be sure you uh, think about this. The pathogen is often there anyway. Except you're thinking about the susceptible host plant and the favorable environment. So the susceptible host plant may be something that's under stress or it's just a plant that normally gets that disease. The favorable environment is the one that you probably have the most control over and usually water is involved. So we have the disease pyramid. So the triangle you see a lot of in literature uh, quite often they talk about time now because it may take, uh, as you um, will see in the oomycetes, it could take two hours for infection. It could take nine hours for infection. This is one of the reasons we want to do any watering we have to do that might result in overhead watering in the morning. That way the, the water has a chance to evaporate. So a susceptible host plant may have the genetics that make it prone to get these diseases. Stress is very much uh, a part of this. And then a certain growth stage may be vulnerable to the pathogen. So sources of pathogens include other infected plant materials, established plants that have diseases, debris that you've left behind, infested soil used in the soil mix or reused pots, even dust. Water dripping and splashing from infected plants overhead. Water splashing from below. Air currents carrying spores. Insects or mites carrying diseases from infected plants to healthy plants. 
contaminated pruning and maintenance equipment and you can be a vector for certain diseases so something to really consider and this is our basic uh, plant disease um, life cycle we've got our pathogen it produces inoculum we've got a large quantity of it and then it disseminates and creates infection so um, some things are obviously much more in detail, but this is your basic plant disease life cycle. So when you're talking about disease management, you want to think about some things like avoidance. You want to reduce the level of disease. You select a season or a site where there's a low amount of inoculum and do it when the environment is unfavorable for infection. In this case, we've got cytospora canker on peach, and it's recommended that you do summer pruning on peach because you get extended dry periods. If you've got water in the area and you've got this disease, you're just going to be spreading it from one tree to another. Exclusion is reducing the amount of initial inoculum introduced from outside sources. In this case, we've got a blueberry scorch virus this happens on blueberry and cranberry and so anything that's brought into Washington State of these plants has to have a certificate of quarantine compliance that must accompany each shipments. Washington also has to uh, do this when they send some of their plants out there and you'll be looking at that at one of the things you're going to be doing a report on. Eradication is reducing the production of initial inoculum by des destroying sources and that's in inactivating the sources through sanitation, removal of reservoirs, removal of, of alternate hosts. So common chickweed, which is an overwinter, uh, it's a winter annual, actually can be an overwintering source of cu cucumber mosaic virus. And this is what that looks like on your cucumbers. So protection is reducing the level of initial infection by the means of a toxicant or other barrier to infection. This is usually a fungicide. These are rarely curative. They're really as protectants. Resistance, you want to use cultivars that are resistant to infection. Here we have Rosa Electron, which is resistant to black spot and powdery mildew. So fungi is the largest group of plant pathogens. Most of our disease problems are going to be here. Signs include filamentous structures such as mycelium and hyphae or spores. And some of the symptoms you may see are wilting, rotting, leaf spots, damping off, distorted or disfigured plants. So your leaf spots are going to be irregular to circular. They may have concentric rings. They sort of look like uh, bullseyes. They may have red, yellow, or purple halos, and you may see mycelium spores or spore structures. So here's some of the structures. Hyphae are branching filaments that make up the mycelium of the fungus. They absorb nutrients from the environment and transport them to other parts of the fungal body. So that's what you have in the upper portion of this picture of the slide. On the left here, we've got uh, wine, what, white pine blister rust and so these are signs uh, they're the fruiting bodies you have a conch on the right hand side there too that's sign that there is disease on the inner portion of the the trunk so chances are these are already dead or dying botrytis blight on blueberry this survives on dead plant debris it can overwinter in decaying organic matter and soil it spreads by wind and splashing water. It can move through blossoms into wood. So uh, sanitation is huge here. So you ov avoid overhead watering, sanitation, picking up any dead debris, throwing it away, do not put it in your compost, um, prevent injury to the fruit, provide your good air circulation, and avoid late season fertilization, which provides a uh, very weak new growth. Bacteria, slimy if present, 
Symptoms include wilting, rotting, leaf spots, distorted or disfigured plants. We've got uh, a clavipactor um, pith discolored from um, bacteria. Then you've got some bird's eye lesions caused by bacterial canker on tomato here. So your bacterial leaf spots are going to be angular, water-soaked in appearance. They may have irregular orange or yellow halos. You may see wet or dried slime on the edge of the leaf spot, and they may have a foul odor. So they need some sort of entry into the plant, and usually it is a wound, but it can be through the stomata or other natural openings. Here's a bacterial leaf spot on begonia. Here's crown gall bacteria. They genetically engineer their host to make galls and amino acids. On the right hand side, you can see these, if you cut the stem and you pull them apart, these are the strands you're going to see of a stem that has bacterial disease. So very commonly, and I'm thinking about this when you start collecting your plant samples, uh, crown gall and euonymus, you're gonna see this in many places. This is so common. Uh, so you remove the plants, you might be able to prune off the galls, not likely, but possibly. You wanna sterilize your tools between cuts, prevent wounding, don't take cuttings, and then uh, this Agrobacterium radiobacter K84 is actually a biological control for crown gall. It might help in uh, smaller infestations. I think this particular plan is too far gone. Viruses, you're going to have vein banding where it just goes across the, the, the vein. You have mosaic patterns that may be modeling, stunted plants. You might have distorted or misshapen leaves or fruits. Here we have tom tomato spotted wilt virus. You may lose up to 100% of your plants. The first symptoms are going to be yellow spots with a green halo. They become brown with age. Your terminal shoots will wilt and then the plants will become stunted. These are spread by several species of thrips, which are really tiny insects, and they are often living in weeds around your garden, so it's really important to keep your weeds away, but here's what the symptoms look like. The other thing, as I just mentioned, uh, here's some three weeds that are definitely going to provide an oculum for you. Cheeseweed, sow thistle, and prickly lettuce. Okay, so you're going to remove sources of the virus. You're going to manage your thrips populations. Sometimes silver reflected mulches can repel them. Uh, row covers are most affected when the plants are young with a small canopy. And chemical control would be for the thrips, and spinosad is actually an organic product. <laughs> 